Yes. Okay, we have Desert Big Orange Sheep. <clears throat> Thirty-one fifty-one. Your two thousand fourteen quotas. <clears throat> We're recommending uh, just a slight increase from last year. Not many comments. sure you got me right. Five, nine, and a little bit. Okay, you got him. Thanks for keeping me on the straight and narrow, Glenn. <laughs> so now I'm happy. <laughs> We're on the right page. Right year would help. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other public comment? Okay. Seeing now, bring it back to the commission. Chairman, I'd make a motion that we approve Nelson's Desert Bighorn Chief Resident Indy Ram Indy Legal Weapon Hunt 351 as proposed. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner McNish, second by Commissioner Drew. Uh, can you scroll back up for a second, Mike? Yep. I'm looking at uh, 134 right there at the top. That's, that's the one in, in the our tags have been a lot bigger than that, but our recruitment is going down, down, down. There's going to be a point that we're basically out of sheep because we don't have any recruitment in there. That's the trend, yes. And this is representing uh, Mike Cox. That four tag, two tag decline is we are recognizing we did have some adult mortality during that 2011 disease event that we hadn't thought that occurred. So, but yes, uh, we haven't had essentially any recruitment for three years now. And the reason I point that out is because we're going to have a discussion here in a minute <clears throat> about EU harvest. And that scenario in 134 is what I'm concerned about statewide. Uh, I've probably hunted 134 10 different times, and it's one of my favorite places to go, and uh, I just don't want to see that type of trend across the state, and if we don't do the right thing, I think that we're going to see that more places than just in 134. So, any other comments, questions, or concerns? Anybody got a motion? Oh, I'm sorry, we have a motion to second. That was my discussion. Sorry about that. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the vote. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, the next hunt is the Desert Big Orange Sheep NEU, any legal weapon 3181. And we definitely have a few comments and alternative recommendations. Okay, any questions from the commission? Seeing none, let's go to public comment. I'm Sherry Washington County. Um, I just wanted to put on the record that uh, we didn't have a full board, but uh, this was a very... Um, it's kind of emotional discussion on this thing. So um, we had no recommendations. So I just want to make sure. Okay. Mr. Kellers, Wayne Kurtz Award winner a couple of years ago. Anyway, uh, my name is Steve Kellers. I represent myself. I'm a dentist shoot hunt as well as the uh, California Big U hunt. I know that the time has come probably to scientific evidence has said that we should probably kill these ewes. And because they've got some sort of a 
Moby, I guess a Moby disease or some kind of Moby pneumonia type stuff, they should be killed. I don't know, maybe I think there should be a place to put them in the state, maybe by themselves. I don't know. But anyway, I had one question, and I'd like you to see if you can answer that. How are you going to uh, educate the public as far as uh, differentiating between a yearling ram and a, and a ewe as far as when the hunting season starts? We'll have slides, uh, pictures. In fact, Colorado has it. We're stealing Colorado's as we have in our own indoctrination, we've got slides that show ewes and yearling rams. So it's going to be through those pictures that we're going to try to educate the hunters the best we can. Okay, and the other question I had was if there was a place to put these sheep, would you still recommend having a sheep hunt? Yeah, I went over, uh, you know, what I thought is our viable options today. Um, and we just don't feel like we've got appropriate places to put them right now. But I've said that we, we need to continue to work hard, harder to find good places that are low risk to continue to try to find uh, some of these sheep herds that are bursting at the seams, some, some places that they can expand into. What's Definitely. the biggest obstacle as far as finding new areas? Well, it's right now, uh, it probably is the risk of contact with domestics, whether they're farm flocks or public land allotments. Um, obviously, water developments, we can, we can deal with that, as you know. So that is not, that's not an obstacle. Um, money doesn't seem to be an issue. It's really the trying to, trying to get a large area that has long distance away from domestic sheep, whether it's someone's little farm flock or a glorious flock or, or trailing route or public domestic sheep allotment. So that's probably the biggest obstacle. And, and then, of course, that involves land management agencies, uh, coordination with those folks. And okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other public comment? Mr. Belding. Oh, nope. Kevin. I'm, I'm sorry, Kevin. You were, you were, no, no, no. That's okay. Okay. Come on up, Al. Uh, Kevin Sterling, Nye County Cap. Uh, two of the units, Unit 212 and 213, those are not in my county. They're right adjacent to my county. Um, at our county game board meeting, we had a bit of discussion about this. We all felt the same way. There's only three of our five members present, but all the three of us present felt the same way. If there's anything we could do with those ewes outside of shooting them, moving them somewhere, we thought that was a great idea. But the fact is, it's confirmed now that the, the sheep in 212, they have longworm uh, pneumonia. And then the ram, there's a ram over there they just confirmed, confirmed with MOB. Unit 213, if anyone's not familiar with the area, they try to cross the street and they do move back and forth because I've watched them walk across that highway back and forth. Um, so it's not if the sheep in 213 are going to have that pneumonia, it's 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 just a matter of end out having the time probably to actually go get them tested and they're going to show positive. And if we can't move them when we're when they're sick, we felt we need to do what's best for those herds and that's going to be to decrease the size of the population. Um, and we felt that's the best way to do it is to hunt some of those ewes. Yeah. <clears throat> Mel Belding, Atlanta Big Horns Unlimited. We had a meeting last Thursday night. We had consensus. We want to give you this letter. The successful reestablishment of Nevada sheep populations in recent decades has been nothing short of remarkable. The shared efforts of Endow and sportsman groups have been instrumental in this success. Endow's management decisions regarding herds, habitat, and risk have been, have been appropriate. Understandably, the recent announcement of planned ewe hunts has touched much conversation and concern among NVU's membership and leadership. Consistent with our mission, we sought to obtain and understand the scientific data before taking a position. 
MDU recognizes that U hunts are a necessary part of proper sheep management, same as other game species. Before fully supporting U hunts, however, we strongly feel healthy bighorn should be relocated into every viable ecological niche that exhibits acceptable risk. Again, MDU recognizes that Endow has established itself as one of the foremost experts in management of bighorn sheep. MDU's intent is not to question the past or future direction of Endow's management approach. To the contrary, we remain more committed than ever to helping make Nevada the worldwide model for bighorn sheep. And now I'm going to speak for myself through the chair to Mike Cox. He made a statement that we decided that there's no place to put sheep. Who is we? Collectively, our biologists. So when you say collectively, your biologists, what do you say to those biologists that, that are asking you for transplants, translocations into their areas? Are you including those biologists also? Give me an example. I'll give you an example. Um, 206, the Excelsior. We have a scheduled release for 95, correct? We can release 95 there now. We also have one in the, in the north end of the Gab Valley range where we're asking, where that biologist is asking for sheep. You're also being asked for sheep in 195. You're telling me no. Um, so who is we collectively? Who is we? And are, are those biologists, are they being uh, treated fairly also? And who is saying no to that? And, and what I'm trying to get, we've had more debate during public comments and I'm really comfortable with those. They're fair questions and maybe when we get back to the commission comment, some of those questions can be addressed. But I just don't want to get into debate during public comment. I'm not trying to cut you off, no. I'm just trying to follow let's, the standard let me, we've tried to set here. Let me try another question. Okay, get your questions out and maybe we can address them during uh, the commission comment. Another one would be, do we feel comfortable with a non-mandatory indoctrination <clears throat> when we know people are going to make mistakes. And this is not a mandatory indoctrination anymore. So are we are we feeling comfortable that we're going to turn guys out there? Some of these folks might have never seen a bighorn sheep. And are they going to be able to tell the difference between an 18-month-old ram and a ewe that's five, six years old? That's a concern. Um, I'll say that, yes, and I will be consistent, 213 is now a problem because of Moby at this time. But I, I still want to say just three years ago, we didn't know what it was. It wasn't what we, what we believe it is today. So, you know, as time goes on, we find, we discover these new things and these slides. <clears throat> and just a few years ago, we didn't even know what it was. We didn't know it existed. So I'm wondering if we're just chasing our tail because of that. Um, I, I, you know, the debate, I, I would love to have the debate, but I think it should be on the record that there are biologists that want these sheep. They feel that their units can take them, but they are being told no. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Mr. Johnston. Uh, for the record, Brad Johnston, Lyon County. This uh, prompted quite a bit of discussion at our CAB meeting. I'll do my best to relay that as accurately as I can. I would say that the public comments were in two camps. Uh, one portion of public comment believing that uh, there are potentially places where sheep can be moved and perhaps this hunt is premature. And then the second uh, set of comments was trying to understand these quota numbers, <clears throat> given the numbers that were cited to justify the U hunt. And there was no opposition to the U hunt concept. But if it's needed as a management tool and the numbers require this, then, then we're in support of it. But looking at a quota of, of 20 and, you know, unit 268, does that address the issue? Or are we back here next year and what are we doing with the numbers that are being cited to justify this hunt. Perhaps it's just an explanation we can get from the department, because I think that would help uh, 
alleviate the public comment that was made was how was let's say you had a hundred percent success rate on those twenty tags how does that address the management issue that's being cited when the numbers being cited are so much dramatically higher than that so what the public is saying is let's make sure if we're going to have this hunt because it's needed for management purposes let's make sure the quota is sufficiently high to address that management issue um so so that does get addressed we're not just kind of easing into this and then still having the problem so to speak i think that was the the consensus of the public uh the other public comment was there was a lot of frustration demonstrated by people that believe that there was some lack of transparency in which this u-hunt was first proposed back in i think it was the december meeting at reno when it was a tool to go in the toolbox as a tool of last resort and statement was it doesn't mean we're going to use it a lot of people the public felt that that was no they knew they were going to try to establish it it kind of came on a piecemeal basis i understand that's the way the process worked but there's a lot of people who felt uneasy with the way this has come down in that manner so i wanted to convey that uh public comment to this commission as well thank you so let me know when i can respond i get i have a couple of responses to come on up josh uh I'm going to start by uh, Josh Vittori on the record, um, Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. Just want to make add a couple of things to what Mal had to say uh, to start with, and that is uh, I just want to reaffirm that NBU is committed to the Bighorn Sheep Management Program in the state. I think that's pretty clear, um, and if we are able to find some viable locations to transplant sheep, we are always willing to come to the table with the funds. I think we've made that clear and everybody's seen that. Um, so I want to make that clear right now that if for some reason um, something did come up, um, we would be willing to step up to the plate. Uh, now, with that being said, um, I would also like to speak on behalf of myself for a moment, uh, just as a sportsman, not associated with NBU. Um, I have talked to a number of sportsmen and women throughout the state on this issue, as many of you in this room have also. And it's clear that there is a tremendous amount of dissension and I think Brad just touched on one really important point, and that is education, understanding, and I realize that we're playing catch up now, and I'm not up here to point fingers and, and say where our faults are. I just want to make some recommendations to please proceed, um, especially to the department, uh, to the extent possible, to help the public understand what the biologists' rationale are. Um, and I think they've got a really great start with that so far. Um, and me personally, I, I have a lot of support for the department and I default to the specialists every time on these things and I realize that you guys have to balance the uh, socio-political and, and everything else that's the purpose of the commission um, but I really hope that you you listen to the biologists too um, because I really think they're the ones that, that this matters for um, this is a tough thing to wrap your brain around um, especially when you pour heart and soul and millions of dollars into a program uh, but I really support it and I want the department to know that uh, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, additional public comment. <clears throat> Any public comment in Clark County? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Seeing no more public comment, I'm going to bring it back to the commission and I'm going to start uh, the transparency on, you know, another tool in the toolbox. Uh, I understand what's being said and what's being told, but I also was part of the discussion in multiple commission meetings about putting the U-Rent into existence. And I can recall that I said, that if anything, I think the U-Rent is three years behind where it should have been. We should have done it a while ago. And maybe the department sold it as a tool in the toolbox, but I know when I said commissioner, pretty much said I'm ready to use it uh, because I think we're behind and I know we had that discussion and uh, that was part of the discussion. With the quota in 268 that is proposed of 20, I agree with uh, Mr. Johnson's assertion that if it is a tool to be used for the management is at an appropriate level of uh, quota and uh, I'd be comfortable with that quote being a whole lot more than that on the situation we have down there. So uh, that's 
where I start. And I'm sure there will be other stuff. And let's go to Mike because I know there's some questions that you would like to answer, and then maybe we get into further questions. So go ahead, Mike. Thanks. Uh, I'll try to respond to Mel's questions regarding who's making the decisions and what's it based on. Um, we have certain units that are on the release plan right now. Um, and we went through those uh, amongst our own biologists at our regional meetings. And I looked over them uh, along with our uh, vet, Perry Wolf. Uh, 206, uh, which is the Excel shears, we've, we've augmented it uh, twice now. Um, the primary augmentation is the Garfield Hills. And even though it's not on the release plan, uh, we have plans to get that amended this summer. And we really feel that we need to continue to stick with our, our program goals and objectives when we do look at establishing a herd that uh, you know, between 25 and 35, 25 to 40, is really what we feel is uh, is going to get us a herd that we'll establish. If it doesn't, then there's something wrong with that mountain range. You know, I, I don't. We can debate certainly and talk and discuss a change in that philosophy to start a population with a hundred or whatever the number might be, but. Uh, we, we feel that that's really 99% of our herds, that's what it took to establish things. And so I know there's discussion of wanting to try to maximize these, op these opportunities of sheep bursting at the seams uh, and putting them into unoccupied habitat or low density habitats, but uh, I'm not sure how responsible it is to can you just continue to put sheep into an area uh, because we don't want to kill them? Uh, the Gap Valley Range is not on our release plan right now, and I certainly would entertain uh, opportunities to look at. I think, actually, it's probably the Gillis Range is, is what uh, Jason Salisbury, our biologist, has been looking at to possibly augment. We'll certainly discuss that this summer. Uh, some of the other releases that are on our plan, they, they do involve uh, some risk, uh, the Virginia range. Uh, we've got domestic sheep that, that do exist on that mountain range. Uh, there's some people here in the audience that have physically seen domestic sheep on that same mountain range with our wild sheep. We knew that going in. Um, we felt we had enough separation. And I, I still think we might, but it is a new day. And I think we need to be more cautious and uh, not pushing things. And anyone who's been out in the Virginia range knows the horrible range conditions that, that have been caused by the feral horses. And I think we have to address we have to address those feral horses first before we put any more sheep in there. We've got a great complement that we put in there. Uh, they're doing well, and we should allow them to continue to do that. Um, there are some other units uh, that I've asked our biologists to put on the release plan, but, uh, and, and the commission knows, for example, the the Sonomas, um, there was a caveat until we address, address uh, the domestic sheep permit nearby. Uh, that actually goes into the southeast end of the Sonomas. Uh, that's that's going to stay in the parking lot. And we've started discussions with BLM, but who knows how long it will be before we get enough separation where we're going to feel comfortable. And it's, it's, it's frustrating for me. I, it's awesome, awesome habitat, and uh, but we really need to be 
more responsible with our sheep. Uh, we've, we've got all these situations we've created in the past. And I don't fault anyone. And, and I know personally many of those biologists that were involved in putting sheep in places where we felt we had risk that was limited, that was manageable. And uh, we've learned through the information we've collected, uh, GPS collars, genetic data, uh, movements of domestic sheep into our wild sheep, that the distances that we thought were enough for separation uh, in the past is, is simply not. Um, and, and I bored most of you enough with my maps, with the GPS collar, that you've seen many of those examples. Uh, and they're real. So um, it's, it's tough to change. Um, there was, there's never going to be uh, enough time to try to get everybody on board. Uh, and I'll admit that we were caught flat-footed with the information we were collecting, uh, which herds had virulent pathogens. And uh, we would have liked to have more time to try to plan ahead and try to make more opportunities out there for our, our source populations that are bursting at the seams. But we, we were trying to react with the information that we have, which in some of it you know, just like Lone Mountain, uh, a year ago, we said, hey, we've got a lot of sheep. They're still healthy. We're going to move. And now uh, we've got a pneumonia event. We don't know the extent of it. Uh, we do have mycoplasma over pneumonia detected in Lone Mountain. And based on our new guidelines, we, we will not use that as source stock uh, until we get science tell us otherwise. Um, we are, uh, and I, we, we did put together information. Uh, it went out um, as a press release. It went out to our biologists. Uh, it, in fact, it even went out to, in an email blast, um, page, page and a half, of trying to explain our sideboards and our constraints that we're living with today. And so getting back to the individual quotas, I'll have to admit also that uh, some of our biologists, like Jeremy Lutz, uh, he's, he's not afraid to tell you what needs to be done. And he's not afraid to put his foot down, whether it's doe deer tags, pronghorn doe tags, or in this case, California bighorn ewe hunt tags. Uh, we've got other biologists that I think um, maybe out of the respect to the NGOs, were cautious, uh, maybe too cautious, with what they felt they could get support for. And I really do believe it, it was out of respect uh, of the NGOs that they didn't want to uh, shove these things down too far down people, um, people's throats. They wanted to ease into things, as we've seen, we do that a lot, easing into cow elk hunts, easing into new strategies, and this u hunt is, I think, is no different. Uh, I've made three separate presentations to this commission, uh, one being uh, last summer-ish, or last fall, prior to the season setting meeting, um, and it may have been later than that, but trying to explain our situation. We never, we did use the tool and toolbox, uh, but we did not use the last resort order. Um, and I think that may be some selective hearing that other people did use that. Uh, and just last year, maybe we didn't think we needed it as quickly as we did. And just in the last few months, um, we, we uncovered some information that puts us in a box. Uh, so for Lone Mountain, um, I think we may have actually wanted to get more tags out of the box, because that population is 
200 over what we really want it to be or should be. But now with this pneumonia event, we're, we're kind of on our heels. We're not sure what kind of mortality we're going to see. So, you know, we feel that 30, 35 tags uh, uh, may be a place to start. The other thing I've said earlier, and I always say, is season structure has to be laid first. If we get into those 50 tag plus quotas, we probably should have been looking at split seasons, which we did not uh, recommend this year. Uh, Monte Cristos, uh, they are next door on the right across the street from Lone Mountain, and we don't know what's happening. Um, it's uh, about 80, 80 to 100 over what we think it should have right now for sustainable levels. And uh, we were probably looking at a three-year period to try to get it down to that level. Uh, we'll see what happens this fall. We are committed on top of not using populations that have mycoplasma detected in them. Also sample these herds prior to us using those as capture source stock. It's an added cost, added effort, but we don't want to be caught flat footed like Lone Mountain where the year before everything was good. What could happen in a year? Probably nothing, but so we're going to go in uh, sometime in October. We are going to sample the Monte Cristos. Um, and if they're clean, and you know, it's, it's a sample. We're, we're not going to sample over 50%. It's probably going to be more like 5 to 10% of the herd. Uh, if they're clean, we'll certainly consider them for source stock. Right now, um, Utah, we, we could strong arm them in using the Monte Cristo sheep. Logistically, they would prefer to just jump across the river and the lake and come down I-15, roll into Muddy's, and then roll back out to Utah, which is very convenient. But We've had them go as far as uh, the Sand Springs Slate area, so they, they might be willing to do that. And then if we take a look at some of these other sites um, to the north, we, we might be able to use those as source stock. The Muddies, we are looking uh, to give Utah minimum of 50. Uh, they ha I have been in discussion or been in contact with them, my counterpart in Utah. They've got uh, some constraints on their end that they really don't think they can take more than 75, but uh, they're going to they're gonna consider this summer being able to take 75. And uh, if we get a high success on the, on the 20 tags, we could be close to removing a third of the overpopulation, if you will, in the muddies. And again, trying to use a three to five year period to get it down is probably the plans. Um, and I've got a ton of respect for Pat Cummings. Uh, I sat on the phone with him and his supervisor, Steve. Um, and, I, you know, Pat was, he was, uh, he's always a tough nut to crack because you can't, he knows everything about bighorn sheep management. <laughs> but I think he appreciated that uh, I just wanted to get to the 200 faster than he did. And those are the kind of differences that we have amongst, amongst our biologists, I think, is moving in, the, in that same direction, but maybe different pace. Um, so that's uh, kind of trying to respond to some of those questions that, that were asked. Hi, I'm looking at 212, and we don't know what caused our problem in 212 that we're aware of now. But we had sheep stacked on top of each other, which may be part of the problem. So had we implemented something like this three years ago, don't know if we would have avoided it or not, because we can't go backwards. But in my mind, I think we may have avoided something had we used this type of tool three years ago. Uh, there's an NGO that came up. They've had a big Northern Unlimited. I'm an eight-year board member of that, past president of that. 
had a lot of time invested in guzzlers and a lot of time invested in sheet management. Sat on a big one sheet management plan and team before. I'm just worried about a scenario like I pointed out above in area 134 where we just see quotas continue to decline because we don't get our arms wrapped around the problem of having too many sheep in an area beyond carrying capacity. And I worry that uh, by taking baby steps, as we are in 268, that we will pay a price for taking those baby steps. And I will personally take a ton of heat for those comments. But I'm not sitting in this seat to do what people want me to. I'm here to do what I think is right for the management of the wildlife and stay in the bat. So I'm willing to take heat to that quota a lot. So, Mr. Cox. Um, I, and I appreciate those comments. One thing I want to explain, we have to use the probability of things going south, uh, the worst case scenario in some, some respects. We don't have those worst case scenarios in every situation. Uh, but we don't know, Perry doesn't know, some of the best pathologists uh, in the United States that deal with wild sheep don't know why certain herds respond the way they do when they get contracted with the suite of pathogens. Uh, there's things that we may not be able to detect today <clears throat> that are part of this four or five legged monster and we're only looking at two or three legs of it. So our concern is will we have a population respond like the pancakes, like the snowstorms, uh, even like what we think the sheep range did. Uh, yes, we after 30 years, we're realizing because we detected mycoplasma a few years ago that because of the signature of those, that decline, that was clear that there was a pathogen involved. And it didn't die out like the Hayes Canyon, uh, but it went down to an extreme low level and now has never recovered above that. Eight to a thousand animals prior. It has never gone above 250 since then, and it's had 30 years. Um, the other thing is, we want to try to keep as many green, clean herds as possible. If a herd does get uh, these these virulent pathogens, and let's say it, it only experiences a couple years of poor lamb recruitment, bounces back. We have those herds, the Mormons, Fairview Slate, Sand Springs. That's good for them. Uh, we're going to continue to see ram hunts and, and possibly population growth, or at least stable herd. But they're a reservoir for these pathogens. So we have to be responsible for the herds that are next door because we don't know how they're going to react. We don't know how they're going to respond with land recruitment, adult mortality. Uh, maybe they've got some other problems we don't know about, and by adding a couple more pathogens, they, they, could, they could go uh, in an extreme uh, disease event, mortality event. So those are the things that we don't want to think about either. Um, we don't want to have to deal with, but we have to. And we're trying to be responsible about it. We don't want to get the blame 10 years from now that we just let a match take off in the muddies and then it ran all the way to denial or wherever it could run to. Um, so we're trying, but it's a, it's a, it's a new arena. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns and we'll be the first one to tell you. So we're trying to use the best information and in some cases we may be too uh, conservative, too cautious, and say, you know, maybe we need to back these herds way down so they don't create the problems for themselves, and maybe we need to have more distance than less distance. We just know that with less distance, we've created some situations that, that are, not, are not good today. So we're going to be a little bit more conservative. Thanks. 
Who else? else? Commissioner Moray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm probably going to be maybe the lone person in this room that, that has this line of thinking on this subject. But if, if you go back, this discussion has come up several times since I've been on the commission. And that discussion came up a lot of times. Uh, our, our former director stated that the places where these sheep have been put up to this point have been the easy, the easy ones. And the difficulty without running into to more conflicts, whether it's with domestic sheep, domestic sheep permits, farm flocks, whatever, uh, the risk increases the more you try to move sheep to these mountain ranges with issues. And so my line of thinking is, I know that there's been, there's been a tremendous amount of money poured into this. There are people that are very, very passionate about all the work that they've done and what it's produced. But at what point do we take a step back and say, we've got enough sheep. Let's try to manage the ones that we have and deal with the, the issues and the problems with the, with the amount of sheep that we have, whether it's to try to transplant them to send some to Utah, uh, implement you hunt try try to get try to get a handle on the situation that we have right now rather than to to try to to move sheep with with and hope that there's enough isolation from pathogens it, it makes it makes no sense to me to go down that road that's why I support the you hunt at at whatever levels we decide today and that was part of the discussion the other day during the Heritage Committee meeting and funding uh, proposals that we're going to bring forward to the Commission. Trapman's transplants has always been a at the top of the list for dollars out of Heritage because trap and transplant basically built the herds we have that we pay those dollars off of. But during the discussion during the Heritage Committee meeting, uh, it's more there's going to be more money spent on collaring and uh, looking at movements of these sheep and, and movements of different animals and trying to figure out animals more than moving them anymore. And that's where the heritage money is starting to focus is learning about our issues instead of creating more before we, I, I'm, you know, you're not the only one thinking that way, Pete. I, I right there with you. Before we go make our problems bigger, we need to get our hands around where we're at today because we're proving daily we there's a problem. We just don't know how to address it. So, uh, you know, moving these sheep, you look at 212, we want to move sheep out of there. We can't now. 213, there's a good possibility we can't move out of there. 268, uh, with its proximity to the rivers and everything else down there, I'm not 100% sure when it comes time we can move those sheep. Uh, I think we can get those sheep in a trailer, sample them, and we're going to kick them right back out because we're not going to move them. Uh, those are my concerns, and I, I think we need to do something to start addressing some of those concerns. And, uh, we're a victim of our own success. I, I worked hard on this personally, but I think we've drove the boat so far that we are getting to the point where we're a victim of our own success and we need to take a look back and figure out what's the best thing to do going forward. Commissioner Macbeth. Uh, Mike, um, I've had some discussions with <coughs> with uh, Pat Cummins uh, over the years and, uh, and getting up to speed on what he's uh, doing. And one of the things that he mentioned uh, was uh, 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 projects at, in the Gold Buttes, and um, and I know there's some issues before you do it, but could you kind of give us a speed on where we are with the potential for moving sheep into the Gold Buttes? 
or are there any issues? Well, th there are. Um, I wish they were just biological, but um, we've got a, a water transfer that was going to be real positive in the long term for all wildlife over there, and it's uh, ran into some snags. And I think until that gets addressed, uh, we may have to wait a little bit longer to uh, make the habitat better and provide us an opportunity to maybe do an augmentation or two. Steve might be able to give us some more insight, but um, I know Pat has a love for that area, uh, the Gold Buttes and the Blue <coughs> I, I, he's definitely uh, working in that area, but there's, there's some constraints. Uh, Steve Kimball, I'm the game supervisor down in Southern Region. Uh, certainly we've been looking at the Gold Buttes for the last 10 years that I've been here. There's a huge chunk of unoccupied area, but there are many issues, not the least of which have been seen in the uh, news over the last little while. Uh, we don't even know if we can go in there right now. We have, uh, as Mike said, uh, Clark County was going to transfer some water rights. We went in and we uh, evaluated that, and we have some good alternatives for some water sources. Uh, Pat found a patent mine in Wilderness that it could potentially improve, uh, but that's certainly long term. That's not going to happen soon, and. Uh, as Mike also said, you know, Pat loves that area. He goes in there and camps. He spends a huge amount of time. He's improved some of the waters that are there. We're doing everything we can, but it's just not a good opportunity right now. And the other issue is given the level of the lake, if we moved them from the muddies over there, they'd probably just walk home. So, you know, there are there are a lot of things that go into this we consider, but we don't always bring forward. Does that answer your question? Thanks, Steve. Okay, any other comments, questions? Commissioner Drew. Mike, it seems, uh, and I couldn't find it in the book, and I thought I had seen it, but can you give us a sense of how far over carrying capacity you think the buddies might be? <coughs> right now, our population is 900. <coughs> At fuels, our sustainable level is 700. Okay, so 200, and we're thinking 50 to 75 are going to go to Utah this year. And are we using any of those as source stock in state? Uh, we've talked about it. Um, we need to we need to pursue drop net opportunities to move them north to northern climates, um, give them an opportunity to acclimate in more months. So that one is uh, on our docket. Has so many other things. Our guys are a little busy, but we need to pursue that harder. And I think if we can get uh, drop nets. And some assistance. Um, we need some personnel that we don't have on staff to work those. We might be able to move those and use those for other source stock. But right so now we can't. There's the potential of maybe half of that excess being done with, not counting, I guess, this year's lamb recruitment. Yeah, you know, a third. I, I wouldn't say a half, but a third. Who knows? It, it could be 50 and. 10 successful U hunters, you know, so it could be 60 uh, out of 200. And I'm just kind of curious, I, you know, I I trust your guys' judgment in terms of what you think the carrying capacity should be, but I'm looking at the lamb recruitment and it still seems to be very, very high. So if we're that far over, why are we still seeing that high recruitment? It's, uh, I don't know either. Um, well, I can tell you it's, it's uh, luck. But it's also the Black Mountains. Um, I think Pat can tell you if he was here, and he actually kind of did when we had our Nevada Big Horns and Limited meeting a couple Sundays ago. We averted a disaster, and we were literally days, you know, weeks or days from averting it uh, last year when uh, we got a little bit of reprieve on water. But the other thing was uh, those sheep that are have the ability to go to Lake Mead, uh, have gotten used to sitting on a guzzler and waiting for the rain to fall. 
Pat pretty much found that we had sheep that went all the way to the blacks, down to the river, down to the lake, and watered and saved their own bacon instead of sitting there waiting for a hope and a prayer that a raindrop was going to fall in the sky. So there was, we were right on the jagged edge, um, but the lamb recruitment in the rivers and the muddies, sometimes it does defy odds. And I think we, we've got the data to show that um, we probably have compensatory mortality and density dependent reproduction going on every time we remove sheep out of the muddies. So probably more aggressive than less aggressive could be the answer there in the short term. So are we thinking then that it might be a water as a limiting factor and not so much the forage or? Well, it, we, we have some, uh, you know, some, some overgrazing, if you will, around our water zones. There's no doubt about it. Um, they have to be within a mile or two of those waters for four or five months. We have a, a short-term plan that, that we're working with our habitat division on. It's not going to increase the, the habitat carrying capacity or water carrying capacity of that herd, but we do have some uh, some tanks that have self drinkers attached to them that we are going to be filling up uh, this summer when we think we need them. And we'll try to keep that herd afloat with, with these temporary waters until we can remove them one way or the other. Um, so that is in the works, not only there, but Bear Mountains. Okay, anybody else? Seeing that anybody got a motion or nobody gonna be brave enough and I'll do it. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make a motion that uh, we approve resident Nelson Desert Bighorn Sheep, any you, any legal weapon, hunt 3181 as proposed by the department. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? I, for one, I'm not going to support the motion because I think that we should be doing more. The, the reason I, I stayed with the motion um, is in recognition. I, I think that the agencies, uh, uh, they've got a, a lot of weight that they're pulling on this one. And uh, uh, I think that they've made a conscious decision to uh, ease their way into it. That was a term that was used a little bit um, at the risk of uh, falling short. And I, 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 Lack of a better term, maybe there was some kind of risk analysis done, and I think the department's trying to trying to find a little balance there. And um, at least that's how I'm reading it, Mike. Is that a fair enough read? Yeah, but I know if we <coughs> sample the muddies in October and we find results that we don't want, you know, yeah, would, would 20 have been the appropriate? And that's that's the situation we're in in, in many many arenas. We, we just uh, we just don't have that clear crystal ball. So, so if I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So, why did you stick with the 20 if that's a concern? We felt that uh, we were going to get you know within a, a three or four year period where we needed to be uh, with positive thinking. I guess, I guess the comment I would make is we kind of got to go off the information that's before us today. And I guess I know where Mike and Commissioner Rod were coming from and, and saying, you know, we could capture a bunch of sheep and it turns out we can't move them and then are we going to box? And I'm not completely convinced that we are and I don't know if I'm comfortable voting on that surmising. Plus, I'm, I'm not so sure I'm comfortable jacking the, the tag quotas way up without personally having talked to the area biologist or having had the calves looked at that. It's just procedurally, I'm not I'm not comfortable making that big of a jump. I get where you guys are coming from. I share some of the same concerns, but I don't think I'm willing to go there today. I respect that statement, Mr. Gruden. And, and, and I agree with you. I'm, 
I don't think that uh, my thought process is going to win right here. I honestly believe that the motion will pass, but I do believe that the message has to be out there that we need to do more than we are. And that's part of my discussion. That's part of the reason I want to support the motion is uh, I think uh, Pat looked at this and he looked at it two ways. He looked at it socially and biologically. And I believe that Pat looked at this 100% biologically. That number would be a lot bigger than 20. Uh, so that's my viewpoint. So any further discussion? Mr. Moray? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I tend to agree with you uh, on that aspect. And I, and I certainly don't. I don't, I, I don't object to uh, Commissioner McNinch's point either, but I'm not going to be able to support the motion. Okay, anybody else? Commissioner Young? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's too bad that we just all have, we all want to do the right thing here. And I don't know if there's any right answer to this. And I don't know that some of us that aren't sheep hunters, and I'm not one. Uh, know enough about this other than, you know, what's presented to us here to, uh, you know, to do something outside of what, you know, is being recommended. But, you know, I have tremendous respect for you, Jack, and your, your knowledge of sheep. You know, Mike, uh, he's in the livestock business, and I, you know, I, I, I want to believe that this information is right, but Mike isn't able to He's even unsure. I mean, it's just it's just moving targets, so I can't support it either anymore. So uh, I don't know where that puts us. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Let's see a show of hands so we can get this one for the record. Get Lane, Drew, McNish, Macbeth, Wallace, Bliss. Opposed? Aye. Young Rob. Okay. Next one is a non-resident. Does a big one sheep, any ram, any legal weapon, 3251. Your pleasure. Any, any questions? Seeing none, let's take a public comment. Any public comment? Seeing none, we'll bring it back. Commissioner Bliss. I'll move that we support the non-resident Nelson Bighorn Sheep and the Ram and Illegal Weapon Hunt 3251 as presented by the department. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the opposed? Yes. Motion to pass unanimous. Okay, another subspecies, California Big Horn Sheep, any ram, any legal weapon, 8151, a slight decrease. And I would like to point out that uh, our biologist, Chris Hampson, did actually want eight tags instead of six. Uh, that was my misinterpretation during our regional meeting. And that's it. Okay, any questions? Seeing none, any public comment? Sean? <clears throat> um, Sean Shea, Washoe County. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that Unit 12 went from 6 to 8 because uh, when Chris, was, Chris came to our, our board, uh, we talked about that and it was just a, a screw up. So I just want to make sure it did go to 8. Thanks. Okay, anybody else? All right, seeing none, bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Drew. Move to approve resident California Bighorn Sheep, any ram, any legal weapon, 8151, as proposed by the department, with one change to unit group 012, going from 6 to 8. Second. 
We have a motion by Commissioner Pierce, second by Commissioner Young. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion dash unanimous. California Bighorn Sheep, any you, any legal weapon hunt 8181. Uh, this is the Sheep Creek Range, 068, just north of the mountain. We really would like to remove 30 animals in the short term, and we're looking at, at this point of removing 15 by harvest, or close to 15, maybe 10, and then the remainder, uh, 2025, 20, by a capture and transplant this fall. Okay, any questions? Any public comment? Rex Flowers, representing Washington County to begin with. We do not support this. Uh, these sheep, this is an overpopulation, not a pathogen situation. And uh, we felt there should be a way to transplant uh, these extra 10 sheep or 12 sheep that would be harvested. Um, now speaking on behalf of myself, um, at our board we had a number of individuals from the general public who really wanted to see these sheep come to Washington County. Um, we're, in the process of having sheep planted all the way from Coleman Rim in the north, uh, we're down into uh, Tule Mountain. Actually, Cherry, I think, is uh, one of the places that's been mentioned this year for a transplant. We're doing water projects uh, up in the Hayes Canyon area. Uh, they did a project, water project in Coleman. We have a um, another pilot in Peterson. So we have. Sheep all along that corridor that could probably use some augmentation. Thank you. Mr. Killers. I concur with the gentleman in front of me. I hate to see those sheep get killed as well. There's nothing wrong with them. The only thing they've got against them is they're surviving. They have no disease. They're healthy sheep. There's no reason to harvest them. And I think that there should be a place uh, somewhere in the northern part of the state of Nevada that can handle 15 to 12 ewes. There should be a place someplace. Um, that's how I feel about it. Thank you. Yeah. A little slow in my knee hurt. Bell Building, uh, Washoe County. First, I want to speak on the behalf of NDU. This is where we were 100% sure that we had a place to put these sheep. Um, I will not make any questions to Mr. Cox, but I will make these comments. We have been putting sheep, and this is for myself, this is not MBU, but these are things we discussed. We have been putting sheep into O11, Coleman, to the south on the Massacre Rim. We just started a couple years ago, we put a few back into 013 um, into Hayes Canyon. Uh, those two herds are doing just what the biologists felt they were going to do. We did have a little travel south toward the Duck Lake Highway, 447. Um, they were never of any danger of uh, any, any domestic sheep herds. I was personally on the 013, the first one on the ground when we died off the first time. Had an animal tag that there this year. There's a lot of people that believe that uh, can't prove it, but maybe it was because of the wool grower, myself, and the biologist feel that we got it off of a bunch of goats that was living towards the north end and also a, a farm flock. Those are both gone now. There are no goats. There are no domestic sheep in this farm flock. Cherry Mountain. I want to say something about Cherry Mountain. I can honestly say that where the biologist wants to put the sheep, where he's being told no, is further from any domestic trailing, than any domestic trailing, than what our sheep and the granites are exposed to right now. And I believe Mr. Cox is aware of that. Um, 
We're talking about Cockrell Canyon as far north as we know that country. It's further north than Wall Canyon. There is a place for these sheep from next year's planned release into O11. Fortunately, we're not in the position with California that we are with deserts. We're not experiencing these high numbers. I've read about 068. The biologist's concern, he's not saying that it's over-carrying capacity. It's just a deplorable condition of the range. I don't believe he believes that it's over-carrying capacity. I'm sure that we can take these 15 or Mike is saying 20 or 30 now, but I heard it was 15 and 15. They want to remove a total of 30. I believe I heard some numbers that were closer to 30 or 35 or maybe even 40. But we were told 15 and 15, and there's places for those other. If you have an 80% kill for those other 12 or even 15, I think we really ought to look at Cherry Mountain and the next year's release for O11. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Drew. Mike, could you just give us an overview of what is on the docket for the trap and transplant program for California bighorn sheep and when you're going to use this as a stock source, if it works as a primary stock source, and what the timing might be on that when you take these animals out? So this is the current approved big game release plan through June of 2015. That covers this fall and winter. We just did the Coleman Rim, this last go-around, this last January. We did the Hayes Canyon two years ago. We still have Cherry Mountain on the docket, Cherry Mountain, Cockrell Canyon. And because of the detection of mycoplasma over pneumonia in the Santa Rosas and data that shows we've got animals moving from one end to the next, one side to the next, that we're not going to put any more sheep in the Santa Rosas until we get more information. Although we do have some experiments in the Santa Rosas that we're going to be looking at that will help us look at animals that were claimed, put into areas that have the pathogens and so truly document transmission and truly document the result of that pathogen in the new sheep and their lamb recruitment. Another hard decision. I sat down with Chris Hampson, our biologist, a week ago, actually a week and a half ago, and for a couple hours we looked at maps. Chris has really did an outstanding job to eliminate what I agree with is likely the higher probability of what the cause was in that 2007 die-off in Hayes, which I think was a farm block situation. So that's been remedied. We still have what's called the Tuladad allotment to the south of the Duck Lake Highway. We put six satellite collars out on that Hayes Canyon augmentation, four on ewes and two on the two of the three young rams. So we looked at that data, Chris and I did. It's a tough one. The two rams, they went all the way down to the Duck Lake Highway, which is just a stone throw from the active allotment. They did go back after a couple weeks, back up to Hayes Canyon proper, which is about 15 miles from the north end of that active allotment. Who knows what they're going to do this summer or next fall or as they get older. And we know that 
that operator down there is uh, his lost sheep. Um, and so there's every potential of, of those domestics being um, astray and going northward and all that all that country is, is connected. Um, but the other thing that Chris continues to do is is we're working he's working very hard with the BLM um, to try to institute some management practices and decisions with that wool grower to uh, do our best to maintain separation. So there's a really good faith effort to reduce that risk, but we, we have had sheep wander right to the edge of that active sheep allotment. And, and on paper, it's, it's tough to ignore. Um, the area between Hayes Canyon and 012, uh, the west side of, of the, that Calico, well, the High Rock country, is uh, all continuous bighorn habitat. Um, Cherry Mountain, Cockrell Canyon, and just so many other great ridges and people that have been up there. We have sheep in there now, low density. Uh, again, it's within 10, 15 miles of that north end of that allotment. Um, now, the operator normally doesn't graze on the north, north end, uh, but on paper, it, it shows that. So it's a tough dilemma to say, hey, do we want to augment haze again? Or do we say, well, let's, let's see what happens with what we put out there now. Um, let's say we don't make that decision to augment it. We do have Coleman rim, um, the Coleman slash massacre rim. Uh, much less risk. Uh, Chris is comfortable in uh, maybe seeing another another augmentation there. So I think we don't know if we're going to be able to potentially do two releases, uh, or it may just be one. And if it's just one, I still think we need that that hunt in the sheep creeks. So I mean, bottom line, you're saying your minimum demand is 30 potentially up to 60 animals to move this year based on what we have on the books. Yeah, maybe 50. I mean, anywhere from 20 to 30 each each complement. Okay, and then tell me about your source populations. Are, if we're taking 30 out of 068, are we not taking sheep out of our source populations or we are afraid we're bumping up against our carrying capacity? The ones we, that we have listed here. Yeah, we have opportunity um, as we have in the past in the Pine Forest, uh, the Black Rock Range, uh, the Montanas. We removed sheep out of the Double H's, so we won't be going there for a couple of years at least. But uh, those populations continue to do well. Um, we, based on, on the assessment of the biologists, we're not at the habitat carrying capacity in those areas, but um, don't be don't be uh, surprised that we we might be coming with a U hunt in 032 next year um, if they just keep those land land recruitment numbers just keep going higher and higher. So we can use those other herds. At this point, I don't think we have to, but we can certainly large enough, and the horizon is is quickly moving into that sustainable level for, for some of those herds. Anybody else? Okay, may I have a motion? Bighorn sheep, any new, any legal weapon hunt, 81-81, to department's recommendations of 15. Well, uh, I'll second that for purpose of discussion. I have a question. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Moore, I second by Commissioner McBeth. Now we can have discussion. Um, 
guess the issue I'm trying to get my head around is it seems that it's only 15. It's only 15 sheep. And how come we can't absorb them along the lines of what some of the comments have been? It's just not that many sheep. It's 30 sheep is what we need to move that are alive based on the conditions out there in the sheep creeks. Pay me now or pay me later. This problem ain't going away. So, like I said, don't be surprised if you come in with a new season 4032 next year. So, could we? Yes, but then I'm forced to be the bad guy, which I'm, you know, that's the way I get paid the big bucks. You're my guy. To make these hard decisions of separation, being responsible. We have a lot of other people watching us. Every move we make, good, bad, or indifferent, one side of the fence or the other. Is it the right thing to do or is it the wrong thing to do? Some people will chastise us for perpetuating a potential problem that might bite us down the road. We may not see the problem of disease transmission initially, but versus trying to support best management practices, positive things happening on the landscape with wool growers and wildlife agencies. And again, we're back into this cloudy crystal ball. I can't tell you that I, right today, feel comfortable augmenting Hayes Canyon with the information that we have of the movements of those animals. I do feel comfortable augmenting Coleman Rim, but I don't know between now and next fall if both of those areas I would feel comfortable putting sheep in. And Cherry Mountain is kind of like Hayes Canyon. There is some distance there, but it's all that habitat is all connected. So if we already have sheep there and we're talking about putting 50 more sheep in there, I mean, what's that going to be after? Yeah, it's a little bit more risk. We have 50 more sheep there. Potentially, you get a disease along with the sheep that are already there. So, I mean, I don't... A lot of people say it's throwing good sheep after bad if something happened. But they're not bad now. Right. Which is good. It could be tomorrow. We don't know. Or it could be 10 years. And that's where we're at, or I guess that's where I'm at, trying to help make some decisions, is we're trying to avoid these problems that we've had in the past. Some of them haven't manifested themselves in something ugly and nasty and 90, 100% population reduction. But we don't know in the future if we're going to have a moderate response to the pathogens or an extreme response to the pathogens. But no pathogens right now. Yes, but we have risk. And I have to work in the world of probability. And when I have two rams that went essentially 300 yards from that allotment, that active allotment, that's staring me in the face. I have to deal with that decision. I have to deal with that data, that information. I can't ignore that. Commissioner McNish. So, Mike, before we made the motion and started to talk here, there's no doubt in my mind that there's a big difference between this and what we were seeing with the deserts. To be honest with you, when we were talking new hunts and the possibility of those coming to us, I had envisioned 
deserts and not anything else. So um, when I saw this, you know, I mean, it just didn't make, it just didn't take that one step further. Um, this this one's really hard for me because I can see the point of moving sheep into areas, but uh, but uh, I will say this is uh, historically um, I've been a a pretty strong advocate for the department when it comes to this. I may not sit up here and say, you know, talk about uh, the, the science and uh, you guys are the biologists, but my track record's been pretty pretty strong that, uh, you know, I support you guys. And um, in this particular one, um, I don't know if I'm making the right decision or not, but uh, you won't be, uh, I'll be supporting the motion because, uh, you know, I, I have to, I do have to trust you guys and, uh, on this particular one. I, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the right decision uh, if I'm making the right decision or not, but uh, um, pay me now, pay me later is what you said, and, and I can see where that could be an issue. Um, so I, I, I'll make this decision understanding that we could make another decision and come out just fine on the other end, um, but I think I'm, I, I lean more this way than, than the other, so that's where I'm at on it. Thanks. Yeah, I would tend to agree with Commissioner McNish. I mean, this one's a little bit unique. Um, but just given our demand and the other sources we've got in other areas, I think we're going to meet our demand one way or the other. Um, I kind of default to the local biologists here. I mean, the, the range conditions obviously are not good. They don't look like they're going to get a lot better this year. Um, you know, and just looking at some of the survey data, it doesn't look like this population is doing too hot. So, um, while it's a tough decision, I think immediate relief is probably the most prudent action. I'll support the biologists on this one, but. Um, it's definitely not an easy decision. Okay, anybody else? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Must pass unanimous. Uh, the non resident, California Bay Orange Sheep, any RAM, any legal weapon, 8251. 10%. Total 9.8. Any, any questions from the commission? Any public comment? Seeing now, I'll bring it back to the commission for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve non resident California bighorn sheep, any ram, any legal weapon on 8251 as proposed. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner McNett, second by Commissioner Walls. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion passed unanimous. Rocky Mountain Big Orange Sheep, any ram, any legal weapon, 9151. Any questions? Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Move to approve resident Rocky Mountain Big Orange Sheep, any ram, any legal weapon, hunt 9151 as presented by the department. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Drew, second by Commissioner Wallace. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Most compassion unanimous. Mountain goats. Uh, I'm glad Tolman has not been uh, watching us. <laughs> uh, we, we surprisingly have, have rustled up 11 tags statewide for our mountain goat <clears throat> harvest. Uh, our hunts in 101, 102, and 103. And uh, I know there is an alternative recommendation from Oakland County. Okay. Any discussion from the commission? Seeing now, I'll take it up for public comment. Any public comment? For the record, for everyone, to Oakland County Cap. On this one, after talking to Caleb, our biologist in that area, we uh, elected to move in the 101 area, take the number from four up to five, and we accepted all the others. Caleb said that there's 10 flag and delivery up there in 101, and he didn't have a problem moving it up. Okay, any further, any further public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. 
Move to approve resident mountain goat, any goat, any legal weapon hunt, 7151 as proposed by the department with one exception in unit group 101 to go from four to five. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Drew, second by Commissioner Young. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion passed unanimous.